Hi there, all to new friends. It's JC. Did you know some thin steel cutting dies are better than others for hot foiling? In this crafting tutorial, I will share my three favorite kinds of steel dies that pair perfectly with Altenew's hot foil transfer sheets. <music> For my first card, I'm going for a modern linear design with simple stamping techniques to pair with the foil. I'm starting with a four and a quarter by five and a half sheet of white cardstock that I will foil directly onto. Onto this cardstock, I'll use water hyacinth, fresh dye ink, alpine aster, and a large ink blending brush to create a smooth gradient on the top third of my cardstock. Then with Build-A-Garden Pristine Peonies, I'll take one of the floral clusters and stamp it over the gradient in Alpine Aster. That's quick work of the most background element to my card. Now I'll use some foiling techniques to create my focal sentiment. The steel die I'm using for my sentiment foiling die technique is this one, the Water Brush Hello die. I've chosen this die intentionally since there are less parts to maneuver, like individual letter dies, and the variation in letter height will make this die stacking technique easier. I've already cut and stacked a few sheets of the sentiment, but I will set it aside while I foil onto my background. I'm going to foil directly onto the blue floral background I made just a bit ago with Enchanted Gold. Starting above where I intend my stacked cardstock sentiment to go, I'm going to take a sheet of Enchanted Gold foil and sandwich it between the Water Brush Hello die and my floral blended background. I get exact placement with a little bit of satin masking tape to hold the steel die and the foil together. Then following the directions for your hot foil system, I'll use the steel die just like any hot foil plate. What I'm left with is the outline of the hello die. This looks insignificant now, but to make this stand out, I'm going to repeat the foiling steps, but this time I'll slightly shift the steel die down and apply foil again. I'll repeat this six or seven times, shifting the steel die down just slightly until I get this wave foil pattern on my cardstock. The end result is like a topographic map. I love the synth wave feel of this card that has classic and contemporary elements. To finish with the sentiment foil technique, I'll glue down the stacked sentiment below the last place where I applied foil. Then I'll use one of the sentiments in Build-A-Garden Pristine Peonies to complete the statement sentiment. With a little bit of liquid adhesive, I'll gild the very bottom edge of the die cut hello with scraps of the previous foil. Finally, I'll use a few sequins to frame the sentiments. Try foiling with your standalone sentiment dies, especially the ones that are cursive in style, for this fun contemporary topographic card. This second way to foil with steel dies is sure to grab a lot of attention. This next technique will work with many background dies, but I wanted to make a very sleek, glam holiday card with very few items. Off camera, I gold heat embossed this sentiment from the Winter Wishes 4x6 stamp set. Just like my previous card, I will make this my focal sentiment. Then with both Layered Snowflakes and its sequel, Layered Snowflakes 2 die sets, I'll plan and frame the sentiment. I'm taking care not to cover the gold embossed sentiment in the center and cover the entire A2 sized panel as evenly as I can. And like I mentioned before, I have both Layered Snowflake die sets on this panel right now. I'm using Glad Press and Seal to pick up all of the dies from the white cardstock panel. Alternatively, you can use satin masking tape to do the same thing, and this will prepare my card for foiling. I have a folded card base of this specialty acetate that resists warping from heat. Onto this foiled acetate, I'm going to cut a sheet of brushed gold foil slightly larger than an A2 size card and sandwich this between the layered snowflake dies and the heat resistant acetate. 
Then I can maneuver this onto my foiling system. What I'm left with is foiled acetate. If you're going to replicate this card, uh, first tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it. But also, I would suggest adding a paper shim for a more even impression. I had a few indiscernible gaps in places, but that's okay. Uh, but to finish this card, I'm going to completely fill the white sentiment embossed panel with gold pearl splatters from the 14 metallic watercolor pan set. Then I will sandwich this folded card between the foiled acetate for a fun and glamorous holiday card. Then as if there wasn't enough shine, I'll tie the card closed with a little bit of antique gold metallic thread. So for this card I used an array of standalone layering dies to make a foiled acetate sleeve. Finally, for this next card, I did a lot of prep work off camera. I have pieces of cardstock still nestled within their respective dies. I suggest a smooth 100 pound or heavier cardstock for this technique, though this worked with lighter 80 pound paper as well. I die cut the flower elements from Craft of Flowers Sulfur Cosmos, and the reason I'm using this die is because of the debossed veining ridges. This is important for this floral foiling technique because we will be capturing these details with hot foil. As long as your dies have these debossed elements, this technique will work very well for amazing results. If you don't have Craft of Flower Sulfur Cosmos, I always link all the crafting materials in the description box. Now with rose gold foil, I'm going to cut a piece slightly larger than one of the dies and sandwich this between the steel die and the white cardstock. Then I'll make absolutely sure that the cut cardstock layer is locked and nestled into the steel cutting die. You'll be able to feel this if you try this technique. Then with satin masking tape, I'll hold down the cardstock, foil, and die together. I got excellent foil impressions with a scrap cardstock shim between my foiling plates and the die. The result of all of this work is foiled veins in your petals. You can easily remove slight over foiling with the stamp conditioning eraser, but I'm going to repeat this with all of the floral die cut elements as well as the foliage and die cut centers. For the die cut centers I used black cardstock and you'll see the foiling result is the same. To really make these foil die cut pieces complete, I'm going to use the Trailblazing Fresh Dye Ink Collection to color my flowers. I'll use a mix of frosted foliage for the Sulphur Cosmos leaves. And like embossing powder resist, hot foiling dyes do the same thing to resist ink, so you're left with beautiful matte color with intense metallic veins. Then I'll repeat this hot foil inking resist with Woodland Escape on the petals. After the ink dries, I'll glue down my flower with liquid adhesive and assemble my card. I arranged the Sulphur Cosmos on craft colored cardstock and finished the card with pure white ink splatters. And this foiled sentiments from Sweet Sentiments Hot Foil Plate and Dye Bundle. After adding some satin white sequins, that finishes this foiled veining debossing technique using floral dyes. To recap, we used our steel dyes for foiling, and three of my favorite dyes to foil with are sentiment dyes, standalone dyes, and layering floral dyes with debossed details. My series encourages you to shop your existing all to new stash and rekindle their love with newer releases. Perfect Pairings with JC airs on the all to new channel every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for tuning in to this perfect pairing episode with me, and I'll see you in the next one. Hello crafters, Jen here. For more tips, techniques, tutorials, and to discover which paper crafting products are right for you, Subscribe to Altenews YouTube channel. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching.